And we're continuing our conversation about pancreatic cancer after Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee announced her diagnosis. Dr. Curtis Ray, professor of surgery at UT Health Houston, is joining us live to explain more about pancreatic cancer. Good morning, doctor. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. When we're talking about pancreatic cancer, what do you want people to know? Well, pancreatic cancer is one of the most serious diagnoses that, that we can face um, in this country with regards to cancer. This year, it's estimated that about 66,000 patients in the U.S. will be diagnosed with pancreas cancer. And it's one of those diseases and one of those cancers that urgent treatment mm -hmm. and seeking you know, professional you know, medical help earlier in the process is tremendously important. Mm -hmm. What makes it so dire when, when detecting and diagnosing the disease? Unfortunately, I mean, over the last 50 years, there really haven't been many tremendous improvements in, mm -hmm. in the treatment and, um, unfortunately, the outcomes. However, over the past several years, there have been, you know, several new advancements, and, and actually now there's actually a large meeting um, in, in this country with a, a lot of cancer research being presented. There's actually been a lot of advancement over the past a uh, few years with regards to including immunotherapy mm -hmm, in the treatment mm -hmm. for pancreas cancer. And there's a lot of exciting, a lot of new agents that are out there, a lot of new new drugs that may really hold, you know, the key to really being able to fight this, you know, deadly disease. Dr. Ray, do we know risks associated, risk factors associated with the disease? Yes, so cigarette smoking, uh, increases your risk about twofold. Uh, there's a certain type two diabetes. Uh, most patients, some patients will have a family history of, of pancreas cancer. And then some patients that may have a genetic syndrome, BRCA1 or BRCA2, who've had maybe other prior you know, breast cancers may also be uh, definitely a higher risk for pancreas cancer. Uh, with so many cancers that we know there are complications. Can we talk about specific complications associated with this disease? Well, with this disease, uh, early in the process, we think that metastasis develop. Mm. And oftentimes, um, some would say that at the time of diagnosis, there's likely micrometastatic disease that's, that's spread that is not able to be detected with, you know, current CT scans or MRIs or, or PET scans. So, so um, quick treatment, quick initiation of treatment with systemic chemotherapy is, is likely the, the first and, and best step. And for those, about 20% of patients with pancreas cancer are uh, candidates for surgery. Mm -hmm. However, one of the main uh, issues with surgery for pancreas cancer is the very close relationship of the cancer to s serious large blood vessels in the abdomen, mm -hmm. which can often uh, make the operation very difficult and, you know, potentially uh, makes it a very, you know, challenging surgical procedure. Uh, that's why, you know, most, um, and we're fortunate here in the Texas Medical Center that, you know, many uh, surgeons and providers and oncologists are treating patients up front with uh, chemotherapy and uh, other treatments. And I would encourage any uh, any patient diagnosed with pancreas cancer to, you know, refer to different websites, American Cancer Society. Mm -hmm. There's another website, PANCAN, the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, that's got a lot of great information for, you know, patients because, you know, there are so many questions. Yeah, a lot of questions. With that, you know, I have a question for you. It might sound rudimentary, but when we think of lungs, we know the purpose, right? That's to help us breathe, the heart, the brain, and so forth. What is the purpose? What's the job of the pancreas? So the, the pancreas, great question. Pancreas is an endocrine uh, gland that helps to control our serum glucose, helps to control our blood sugar. Uh, and it also makes enzymes that help us absorb uh, and break down uh, fatty foods that we might be eating. So there's really two, two primary functions. There's the endocrine function as well as the you know, exocrine function, uh, but mainly, mainly helps to control our serum glucose. And unfortunately, pancreas cancer is a very, uh, it's developed a really great defense. It's, it's created a very uh, low oxygen environment, which makes it very difficult for 
uh, a lot of treatments to, to be very effective against the pancreas. So that's why a lot of these newer treatments and some of these new trials that are out and available and maybe some of these new, uh, I was just reading a study uh, yesterday from uh, Europe where they were doing a, a new uh, drug for uh, pancreas cancer. So I do, I, I am hopeful that mm -hmm. we are going to make some serious progress over the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. And those obstacles that you just mentioned, those also contribute to the fact that the, the disease can, can, can manifest and metastasize for a, a great length of time before being diagnosed. The signs and symptoms can be subtle. Correct, and, yeah. and unfortunately, unlike breast cancer or mm -hmm. colon cancer or prostate cancer, we really don't have screening guidelines for pancreas cancer uh, in this country. So detecting a early uh, asymptomatic pancreas cancer is, is very rare. It, it is when patients start to develop abdominal pain, weight loss, jaundice, mm -hmm. um, new onset diabetes uh, in, in a person in their 50s or 60s. You know, these are common symptoms that would lead a patient to seek medical care. Okay. Well, there is hope and we so much appreciate your time this morning, Dr. Ray, for joining us and having us having this conversation with us.